Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to troubleshoot a rather extreme case of blue screen error with infinite boot loop. Here we are dealing with a Windows 11 PC, but the exact same tips in this tutorial would equally apply for Windows 10 computers. Now there are several possible causes of such blue screen errors and infinite boot loops, ranging from software related issues like corrupt system files, corrupt or outdated drivers, malware, incompatible updates and so on, to hardware related issues like defective RAM, bad disk sectors, defective motherboard, incompatible hardware components and so on. For this Lenovo IdeaPad Yoga 7, as soon as I power it up, it pops this blue screen with BitLocker recovery. Now after entering the recovery key, which is by the way a chore on its own, it's a 48 character key and I need to enter it many times over during the troubleshooting process. Now as soon as I hit enter, it gets into this automatic repair mode. It says preparing automatic repair and after some time, it pops this option screen with various options. And here when I choose to exit and continue to Windows 11, which is the first thing you should always try if you are seeing this blue screen for the first time. Now it tries to boot up and then it brings me back to the blue screen with the BitLocker recovery. And then below I have the option to press escape to continue. And when I press that, it says preparing BitLocker recovery. And then it brings me back to this option page once again. And this cycle continues basically indefinitely, hence the infinite boot loop. Now I'm going to walk you through my step-by-step -step approach for troubleshooting issues like this and how I narrow down all these possible causes to the most probable cause and possibly resolve the issue. And now without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so first, if you don't have BitLocker encryption on your drive, then you are in luck because it means you won't be confronted with this BitLocker key prompt every step of the way. Now, for most blue screen errors, especially when you don't have any error codes to guide you on the potential cause, then it helps if you remember the last major change that happened or changes that happened before the blue screen showed up. Did you change any hardware component? Did you install any major updates? Did you install some new drivers or applications? Usually, the answer to these questions can help eliminate unnecessary troubleshooting steps. Generally, I like to start troubleshooting on the software side, beginning with various Windows recommended troubleshooting steps. Going with that, and also based on the customer's interest, which is to secure his data, the first step would be to try to exit and continue to Windows 11 option, which I showed earlier. It didn't help in this case, but if it helps in your case, then that is great. It could be a one-time error, but if it doesn't, then the second step would be to try a system restore. Now, obviously, the user will need to have set a restore point prior in order for this option to be effective. So I will check to see if the customer had any previously set restore point. And to do that, while on this option page, I'll click on troubleshoot. Then on the page that follows, I'll click on advanced options. Then here, I'll click on system restore. Now, unfortunately, there is no restore point. The customer hadn't set any restore point on this PC. So I will just close this option and try something else. If you find a restore point on yours, then select it and proceed with the restore if the time suits you. Now, if the system restore doesn't work for you or you didn't have any restore points like in my case, then the next step would be to try to boot into safe mode. From there, you can back up your files and possibly perform other operations that could rescue the PC from the blue screen or infinite boot loop. To boot into safe mode, go to troubleshoot, then advanced options. Here, click on startup settings. Then it shows you the various options you can change during the restart, which includes safe mode. Here, I'll click on restart. Now, normally the next screen should provide you various startup options, including the safe boot option, which is usually number four on the list. So if you have that, just press four or F4 on your keyboard to boot into safe mode. And then there you can back up your files and possibly reverse any changes like uninstalling previously installed applications or reversing some Windows updates or any other settings you change that could be causing the blue screen error or infinite boot loop. In my case, it brings me back into the boot loop. So I'm back to this option screen once again. If that happens in your case or you couldn't get into safe boot, 
then you can proceed to the next suggestion. Here I will try to uninstall any recent updates in case this issue is coming from some incompatible updates. To do that, while on this option screen, I will click on Troubleshoot, then Advanced Options. Here I will select Uninstall Updates and then it presents these two options for quality updates and for feature updates. Now, except you know the exact category of updates you recently installed before the blue screen or infinite boot loop, I will recommend uninstalling both categories one at a time to see if that helps. So here I will first uninstall the latest quality update. And afterwards, I will come back and uninstall the latest feature update. Now in my case, trying to uninstall the feature update, it says we ran into a problem and wouldn't be able to uninstall the latest feature update. Now if uninstalling update worked for you, then that is great. But if not, you can proceed with the next suggestion. Here we'll be running some commands on the command line terminal to see if any of those commands would fix the blue screen or infinite boot loop. Now I've made a video in the past where I covered how to troubleshoot such blue screen error and infinite boot loop using the command line terminal. I will leave a link to that video down in the video description. Now there's one command I didn't cover in that video that I would like to mention here. So first to get into the command line terminal, here where it says choose an option, just select troubleshoot once again, then advanced options. Here click on command prompt. Now from here you can try the commands I showed in the initial video I mentioned and see if that will resolve the issue. The command I didn't cover in that video is the system file checker command, SFC. This SFC command is specifically designed to repair missing or corrupted system files which could very much be responsible for such blue screen errors or infinite boot loops. This is a very simple command so while on the command prompt, just type the command SFC space forward slash scan now as shown on the screen and hit enter. That should initiate the scan process. Here it will show you any corrupt files found and what actions taken. In my case, the Windows Resource Protection found some corrupt files and repaired them, which is good. Now this process could take quite some time to complete. Just wait patiently for it to complete. And afterwards, restart your PC and see if that helped. Now in my case, that didn't help. So. I've pretty much exhausted most of the common software related approaches for troubleshooting this blue screen and infinite boot loop as recommended by Windows. I will now shift gears towards the hardware related fixes. Normally the first thing would be to try to change your RAM sticks if you have removable RAMs and see if that helps. But in my case, I don't have removable RAMs. So I will move on to the next thing which is the SSD. Now because the safety of the customer's data is crucial in this case. I will start by trying to back up his files before testing the disk for bad sectors. To do that, I will remove the SSD, attach it to another computer using an adapter that suits it. Now here ensure you are using the right adapter as I showed in a previous video. If your disk is NVMe, check that your adapter supports NVMe, otherwise it can't read it. Now the moment I attach the disk, I get this pop-up saying access denied, obviously due to the BitLocker encryption on the disk. Now I've copied the BitLocker key to my clipboard to make it easier to paste. So I will just click on this BitLocker encryption pop-up. And then that should provide you this field to enter the key. As soon as I paste and hit unlock, it unlocks the disk. Here as you can see the padlock icon on the disk is now open and blue, meaning it's unlocked. However, when I try to open the disk, I get this error saying the request failed due to a fatal device hardware error. This is usually the case when it's not possible for Windows to read or write to a drive. Now as far as saving the customer's data is concerned, this is a bad situation. And it's even worse because the drive is encrypted. So here we have an encrypted drive that Windows can neither read nor write to. With that, I knew I would need a more advanced solution if I would stand any chance of recovering the customer's data. And without second guessing, my go-to solution was the EaseOS Data Recovery Wizard Pro. This is a very powerful data recovery solution that has saved my day on countless occasions. 
I have demonstrated the power of this tool in a previous video and it has only gotten better since then. The interface has gotten more user-friendly and the recovery capabilities and speed has significantly improved. Now, not just is it able to recover lost or deleted files, this tool is practically capable of maneuvering through bad disk sectors and reconstructing damaged files, which is incredible. Now, after using this tool over time and seeing its amazing results, I reached out to EaseOS and they have agreed to offer you, the viewers, a 20% discount on this and any other tools you will find in their collection. Tools like the EaseOS Disk Copy for cloning your complete windows and files from one disk to another. The EaseOS To Do PC Trans for moving your applications from one device to another without losing your settings or configurations. The EaseOS Fixo Video Repair Tool for repairing damaged video and media files and a whole lot of other useful tools you can find from their collections. Now for this situation, I will try to recover the customer's files from this basically unreadable drive using the EaseOS Data Recovery Wizard Pro. So here once I launch the app, it shows a list of the storage drives in the system including any attached drives. Here you can see the customer's drive with a padlock icon meaning it's encrypted. Now as soon as I select it and hit search for lost data or you can just double click it, it pops this BitLocker decryption prompt. Here I will just enter the key and hit decrypt to begin the process. Immediately it begins to search for lost data. Here you can see it clearly indicates that the program is trying to skip bad sectors to find data. So this is the case of the disk having several bad sectors and possibly these bad sectors contain essential system files without which Windows can neither boot up nor read or write to the disk. Now I'm going to fast forward this process and see how much data we recover at the end of the day. And here we go. After the scan, I have over 72 gigabytes of user files, which is what the customer is interested in. But in addition to that, it has also reconstructed over 200 gigabytes of files and some hundreds of gigabytes of old data. Of course, a lot of these are not necessarily needed, but you can see below here that it found over 2 million files, totaling 759 gigabytes. And this is from a 512 gigabyte SSD. So this tool certainly scans deep. Now from here, I backed up the customer's files, switched in a new SSD and installed a new copy of Windows 11 to the machine with no further issues. So based on this use case, it's obvious that not all blue screen errors or infinite boot loops can be resolved through some sort of software based approach. In cases like this where such blue screen or infinite boot loop is coming from bad disk sectors, the priority would be to try to recover the user's data, that's the files and folders, using a tool like the EaseOS Data Recovery and then swap the defective hardware for a working one and try to restore the entire system. Once again, you will find a link to the EaseOS Data Recovery and other relevant links down the video description including the discount coupon. And that is it for this tutorial, hope one of these was able to help you out. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and share with anyone you think might want to see. Drop us a comment if you have any questions or feedbacks. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications on future tech support videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.